the machine develops, but not on our lines. The machine proceeds, but not to our goal. We only exist as the blood corpuscles that course through its arteries, and if it could work without us, it would let us die. E.M. Forster, The Machine Stops, 1906. An increasing number of modern Frankensteins, that is, who thought they were creating saviors for the world, are now repenting and talking about the dangers, or the uncontrolled growth of artificial intelligence. One recently resigned from Google and said, I made a great mistake, I should never have started on this. A, a very prominent founder of neuroscience. So I then look at the way, look at how artificial intelligence, uh, and particularly compute, uh, its computer um, uh, intelligence has grown. And one of the points I make is this has actually grown out of military. We want more k efficient killing machines. And therefore, a lot of it came out of the Second World War and the Cold War. And then it had civilian spin-offs. But military, military needs were a very, very important part. I doubt whether we'd have the machinery or technology we now have had it not been for military demand. Then I discussed the question of consciousness. In what sense are AIs conscious? In what sense are they aware of what they're doing? They may be able to do it very efficiently, but are they aware of what they're doing? And, and have they got an attitude towards it? And this is, this is very, very important, because um, otherwise, in what, what, in what sense can you call them intelligent? I mean, what do we mean by intelligence? And then um, I uh, say that really, um, where do we get our intelligence from? And most neuroscientists say, well, it's just part of the brain. But it's a very complicated part of the brain. It, it, our brains are more complex than that of animals. Therefore, we have consciousness, but they don't, so to speak. The problem is people have been looking for the mind for a long time, and they can't find it. They find the brain, but can the brain can the mind be reduced to lots of atoms swirling around up here? That explains the brain, but does it explain the mind? And if it doesn't explain the mind, how do we account for intelligence? And then I finally I talk about transhumanism, which is the latest expression of the uh, belief that artificial intelligence will just go on getting more and more intelligent, and that that poses dangers. So what they want to do is to equip these rapidly developing super intelligences with moral principles. But first of all, they can't agree on what moral principles. Secondly, they can't get any international agreement on, on what moral principles should be. And therefore, we do really face the danger of rogue technology, which would gradually take over our functions and our lives, so that we'll, we'll, in a way, be trapped within the kind of systems that are set up by the machines, not our own systems. We'll lose control, and there's a lot of dystopian fiction about this.